We offer online ordering to all our Waxi customers and we will provide you with login credentials to access our site and begin shopping. You can access our website with any mobile device, whether it be a phone, tablet, iPad, laptop, or a desktop computer, and using your internet browser of choice. Once you've accessed the internet, type in the following URL. shop.waxi.com this, this will then take you to our login page where you're going to enter in your username and a password. Click sign in and then you'll be taken to our shipping address page. Whenever you have more than one ship to you'll be asked to select where you would like the order you're creating and the items you're putting in your cart delivered to. So you can scroll down and find the particular ship to or you can select the default ship to. Whenever you see a ship to that's highlighted in gray as you see here this is the default ship to and if you want your product ordered to this particular ship to you just click anywhere in that gray area and that will select the ship to. So in this case, if I wanted my item to go to ship to zero, I simply click off anywhere in the gray area and that's where my product will be delivered to. A lot of times you may have more than seven uh, ship twos. You might have quite a bit of ship twos to uh, decide where you want your product to be delivered to. So in that case, you can use the search criteria. You can use any one of these fields to put in information to search upon. So let's say I know the ship to name. I just don't know the number. So I can type in the word test. So now that's narrowed my search down to three results and three ship twos with the word test in them. So now I can decide which ship to out of the three I want to have this order delivered to. I can also search upon, let's say, a city. I hit search, and that brings me to all of the ship, ship twos with the city of Auburn. And then if I know the ship two number, I can certainly type that in, ship two number 12. I'll hit search and that's going to bring me ship to number 12 with the name House of China. If I'm ready to select, I just click on the arrow and now that's where my items will be delivered to. I'm going to go ahead and click on the My Account icon because this is very important. You always want to make sure that you have selected the correct ship to and of course the uh, correct count. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the user session and we're going to just take a look at our username. We're going to look at our customer number. Sometimes we have taxable and non-taxable accounts so we always want to make sure that we have the correct account displayed and then most importantly where are we having the, the product delivered to. So here I selected on the onset uh, ship to number 12 the House of China. And then just to collapse this, I can go ahead and click off on the white area and that closes the menu there. So now we're going to look at ways to put items into our cart. And, they, and for Waxy, the typical order has um, liners, hand soap, a chemical, some paper towels, and some toilet paper and such on the order. So we're going to look at the various ways we can add some of those items to our cart. And one of the ways that we're going to do that is through looking at the shopping list. So right now our cart is empty and we're going to go again into the My Account icon. I'm going to click on this and we're going to access our uh, shopping list. So we click on the shopping list and the first thing you see here is the negotiated price list. And all these other ones have been created by the user. So the negotiated price list is administratively uh, given to you by Waxi administrators. And basically all that is is a list 
of products of frequently purchased item with contracted pricing. So if I wanted to select this, I would do that by clicking. And these are all the items that are part of my negotiated price list. So I have a total of 11 items to choose from. So I want to order some liners. So from here, I have the up and down arrows. Now I can certainly type in the amount that I want, or I can use the up arrows, down arrows, as I see fit. So I'll go ahead and order one case, hit the little cart here, and two th things have happened. It's been added to my cart here, and now I have a green ball in my cart, and also it opened the shopping cart menu. So here, shopping cart under the heading, we have one item with our price. We have the cart summary with a brief description. To close that, I can just hit the cart and continue shopping. So let's say I was looking for some hand soap. I can use the shop categories to look for hand soap. So one of the ways you can do that is to hover. Now if I simply click, it's just going to open and close the tab. So the trick is to hover and find the, sub, the category that you want, and there's lots to choose from, and then clicking on a subcategory. Now let's say I said I wanted hand soap, so I'm going to go ahead and hover on hand hygiene, and then I'm going to click on the right, so hover on the left, click on the right, to the soap and hand wash system. So I'll click this. And now I'm taking into um, a new page that's containing all kinds of various soap and hand wash systems. So again, I'm under the category hand hygiene and under the subcategory soap and hand wash systems. From here, I see that there's a total of 356 results. Now if I wanted to narrow this result, I can certainly do that. There's lots of pages of information that I can scroll through, but also I can use the search field to type in something. Um, let's say I wanted foam soap. I can just simply type in the word foam and hit enter. This will bring back a total of 144 results with items containing uh, foam. All right, so these are foam soaps on display and I can filter now by attributes. So let's say I wanted a particular scent. Maybe I like cranberry, so I can click on the scent and then of course select cranberry. This once again narrows my results. I'm now down to two. From here, I, I can see that this is the item that I want. Anytime you see um, text or the font in green, that means it's a green product. And behind it, there'll be certifications and uh, <clears throat> certificates on file to show that it's a green product. We have a description of the product. This is a, uh, contains 1.25 liters. There's three in a case. We have an item number. The availabil availability is in stock. And we have our sale price. And then of course, we have the ability to increase our quantities as well as decrease our quantities. And of course, add to the cart. Now we have two items in our cart. It expands the menu bar. And again, we have our two items with a subtotal here, a brief summary to click off. I can click the cart. Another way to add items is if we're still looking for items, maybe we need another soap item, we can use the, um, this acts like a back arrow key. What we call these is crumb or breadcrumbs. It's a trail of where we've been. So if I go click on the foam, it'll take me back one page so I can look at various other foam soaps and then I can choose to filter by attributes once again. I can also click on the soap hand wash systems, which is our subcategory, 
and that takes me back a page and I can still continue to shop and look down and we'll also always give featured items as well and you can click on any any of these to get more information and I can hit hand hygiene our category one more time and that takes us to the beginning to where I can select other categories to search upon. You can also hit Web at Work to get to the main landing page and begin choosing images and categories of your choosing. So let's say I needed a chemical and I know it's a dilution control. I can click on this image here and then I can click on any one of these subcategories. So I'm going to want dilution control chemicals. So I click on dilution control chemicals. And again, um, I have 154 results, but, but I also have the search within results displayed again. So from here, I can enter in the manufacturer's item number, and I can hit enter. And that takes me directly to that particular item. Again, we have the green text alerting us that this is a green product. I have, um, again, a brief description. There's three liters, um, and there's four three liters in a case. And here is my uh, item number, and then uh, our selling price. I click on this, and again, it gives me, expands, and gives me more, more information about the product. So it also gives me, um, again, the manufacturer item number. It gives me whether the uh, product is in stock or out of stock, and then when the next PO is due to arrive, how many is on that PO, and I can use these various um, fields to recalculate based on the quantity the unit of measure, and anytime you do see a unit of measure uh, or an arrow here, that means there's an alternate unit of measure. So you can certainly um, choose to change the um, the pricing, the extended pricing that you see here, by using the unit of measure and recalculating. From here, you see more product information. These are all of our certifications that denote that this product is a green product. We have additional product information, which um, has third-party brochures. And we can click on any one of these, and it opens up a brochure that's printable PDF and gives you more information about our solution station. And you just click out of here to return back. I'll collapse this by clicking on the minus sign. And then we have the safety data sheets. You can access uh, material safety, uh, uh, safety data sheets 24 seven. I'll click on this. This expands and opens up into a PDF. And it's 20 pages in length, and this is because all of our Waxy branded products we have both in English and Spanish. And I'll scroll down, and this is where the Spanish version of the safety data sheet begins. And again, it is a PDF. You can download the PDF, you can print the PDF, you can book bookmark the PDF. I'll go ahead and close out of here, and we're taken back into our items image. And then also, we will put complementary items for products that have complementary items. And so when you see that, you can expand it. And you can always add items to your cart as you see fit. You can put in your enter in your quantity or use the up. Uh, and down arrow keys. Add to cart. Close to expand. Okay, so that was another way to add items to your cart. 
Another way to add items to your cart is to use the search field. As long as you know the item number or the manufacturer item number, you can put that in. So if I put in, let's say, item number 850555 and I hit enter, this now takes me to a paper towel. And a couple of things that I see here readily is that this item is part of my NPL. So I'm okay to order this. Sometimes a user can be restricted to only ordering items that are part of their negotiated price list. So whenever you see NPL, you know you can order it. And, there, and then there are those uh, customers who can order uh, from the NPL or off the NPL. It's just how you're set up and your company chooses to have users set up. So if I want to add this particular item, I can add this to my cart from here. And so that's searching. If you know, let's say, so I just added some towel. Now let's say I wanted a dispenser, but I don't actually know the item number, but I certainly know the manufacturer item number. So I can plug that in. and hit enter. All right, so this is the, the uh, dispenser that will fit the towels I just put into my cart. So from here, I can expand this, again, to get more information about the product. And I can then add to cart from here as well. I type in my quantities, add to cart. So we've looked at a number, a few ways to, to add items to our cart. One of the ways is we went into the My Account icon and we looked at our shopping list and we clicked off on the negotiated price list. Another way that we um, added items to our cart was using the shop categories. We hovered on the left and we clicked on the right. And then the third way was searching by products. Okay, now we're going to look at another way and that is again we're going to go under the, under the My Account tab or icon and we are going to look at the line item add. So I'll click on here. Again you'll have to um, know the item number that you want to add to the cart. So I'll enter that now quantity. You'll have to know how it is sold. And you, you do have your up and down arrows. And then unit of measure. So I know that it's sold by the case as well as the gallon. So I'll type in GL and I'll add to cart. And now I have a total of six items that have been added to my cart. And then another way is to use the order pad. Now this is helpful for when you have, let's say, maybe uh, you have a list of products that you just went into the janitor's closet and you wrote down all the items you needed. Or maybe you're working for, uh, from an itemized PO. Or maybe you're working from a waxy sales order form. Again, you would need to know your item numbers and the unit of measure. So I'll put in a couple of item numbers. So it's 850232 and tab. Put in my quantity and my unit of measure. Tab, put in my next item. Tab, put in my unit of measure. And one last item. tab and put in my unit of measure or in this case it'll capture the highest unit of measure I can leave that blank which I'll do now and add to my order and it always tells you up at the top what's been placed into your cart so there's my first item my second item and my third item and all these items have been added to my cart
Okay, so now let's take a look at the cart detail. And we'll click on the cart detail. And these are all the various items that I've added. I've added, added a total of nine items to my cart. Some have NPL associated with them, meaning that they're on the NPL. Others do not, but I'm still getting my special and unique pricing. Okay. Now from here, if I want to update quantities, remove items, this is where I do it from the shopping cart detail. So let's say I needed to actually have two cases versus one case, and I needed to decrease this to one case. Once I do that, make my changes there, I update. And let's say maybe I didn't need the dispenser. We, I found some in stock. I can simply check off here and delete the item. All right. Now, if you needed to, and you were just trying to get pricing and so forth, and you didn't want any of these items, you can simply hit clear the card. But at this time, we are going to go ahead and check out. And take a look at the checkout page. And now we're down to six items. Um, you're going to see the contact and this is um, the user who's creating the order. The quick requested ship date can be changed by clicking on the arrow key and deciding what date you'd like to have it shipped. Otherwise, it's the next day. The email address that we have on file when setting you up as a user for online ordering. And then we always have to have a purchase order number. So I'll put a purchase no number in here. Um, pay by credit card. If you need to pay with a credit card, you click yes, and you have all your um, choices here, and then you put in the following information. If you are a user or a customer who always pays with a credit card, you won't have to click anywhere here. This portion here will automatically default in. Uh, forcing you to put in a credit, your credit card information. I'll check off here and here is the billing address. Now I encourage you always to look at the billing address because this is another opportunity to make sure that the ship to address that you selected going in is the correct one. If you find that maybe you didn't want this uh, particular item going to the um, shipping address, you can change this. So if I wanted to change this sh shipping address from House of China, I would hit the Change Ship To button here. And now I'm taking back to my shipping addresses where I can easily select a different one. Right now it's being delivered to the House of China. You see how it's grayed out and bolded in gray. I can then select any one of these that are um, available to me. So I can select, um, let's say, this one, ship to number one. Now you'll get this message if you happen to change cities where the tax could be wrong. So it'll always give you that message, just a little alert. And then if I go now back to my billing address, it's now going to test customer versus the House of China. All right. From here, I can look at the products that I have on my order. And then it gives the subtotal with the sales tag and the order total. From here, I will submit to order. And if you forget to put in a purchase order number, it'll alert you that a purchase order number is required. Now we understand that not all customers use POs, and that's fine. You can put in your name, you can put in today's date. We just need to have something in this field. So I will go ahead and put my PO number. 
and submit. And then you'll get an order confirmation thanking you for your order. You'll get your order number. It's alphanumeric order number, five digits in length. You have the ability to print this. This is a new feature. And it is a printable PDF. Again, you can download it and save it to your desktop, or you can print it out. From here, you're, you're able to log out. You'll also get a confirming email confirmation that will get emailed to you. From here, you can log out. And that was creating a quick order